Today in the shop, working on this uh, bracket we're building, well, bracket and uh, USB power strip and 12 volt power. We're gonna bring uh, the old the old case 1394 up to this new millennium. Let's get started. A while back, I bought this on Amazon when I was using uh, it's our loader tractor, so you're always choring in it and stuff, and it seems like your phone's always dead or it gets cold because you're out choring and then the battery wants to die. So I bought this. Uh, unit off Amazon it's got USBs two charging ports um, your 12 volt cigarette lighter plug-in and then it has an on off switch for the whole unit itself so there we go so I bought that unit on Amazon and uh, then shortly realized well how am I even gonna mount that thing it's huge it's bulky the tractor cabs small and there's no plastic areas that you could cut out and mount that um, then I also realized when you're choring, you're pushing snow and all of a sudden your phone, you gotta learn to put your phone. And you're always pushing the snow when you got truck drivers coming, because you're pushing the snow to get to the grain bins and your truck drivers are phoning for directions and, you know, phoning, phoning to find out when they can come or letting you know when they're leaving and you're not ready because, uh, you got, don't got your phone on you. So I want to make that a spot for my phone to sit as well as be able to charge it while it's in the tractor and you're out pushing snow. So I designed this unit here. You got that Amazon face plate, fills in here, got your on off switch, um, so you don't drain your battery dead in case you got your phone plugged in or something, or you got something plugged in overnight, or say you wanted a GPS in it, a lot of those um, Trimble units don't have uh, power switches on like the 250 model so you'll have you'll have an on-off switch for that if you're using the cigarette lighter for that um, You got your easy hook up two wires red and a black um, When I redid the cab in that tractor I already ran the power wire to it. So that's gonna be easy simple um, I left the bottom of this open Just the way the tractor is built it gives you area for your you can run the wires through here as well as once this backing plate is welded on it'll give you an area that you can get your screws and your bolts you'll be able to come in underneath and get those put in as well as run your wires and the way it's built you won't see any of these wires um, because they're going to be hidden underneath and this is going to be up against the cab of the tractor where you're mounting it i designed it with this slope so that you had enough room for the back of these um i don't know they're kind of about the size of a cigarette lighter plug in you know a couple inches long inch and a half diameter so that that gives you room to here and then this back space is going to give you room to actually put your cell phone while it's charging or anything like that so we got our cell phone set on there it always seems like on your choring and uh whatever with that tractor is always when you're pushing snow for trucks to come get grain uh, it seems like your phone is always cold too. You get out once in a while or check in stuff and your phone gets cold and the battery wants to die. So I'd like to be able to charge that while I'm actually working. Um, that's going to give this a place for your cell phone to sit as well as charge while you're in that tractor. Um, the tractor is set up like most older chore tractors, really nowhere, no technology. So uh, I'm going to take this backing plate and I'm going to weld it on and then bring the tractor into the shop, uh, take some measurements on that so I know where to drill the holes and then uh, we'll get that mounted up and we'll take that old case tractor and uh, hopefully bring it into the, the new age of electronics. So let's take these two pieces over and uh, get those on the bench and get them welded up. We'll weld it in there like that. Um, and then we're gonna drill drill a couple holes, probably one here and one here. Um, unless there's already some mounting holes in the tractor, then we might offset those wherever they are for other monitors that have been in there in the back. We took that into the garage, got that welded up uh, with the MIG welder that's just set in the garage because there's concrete floor in there and uh, that unit was pretty expensive so I like to keep that dry and on something that actually rolls nice like concrete. So we got that in the garage, we got it all uh, welded up now, uh, we're back out into the farm shop and we're going to grind that down, um, grind all those welds down, 
make it look good and then give her a coat of black paint and uh, we'll bring that tractor in and figure out where we're going to get that mounted. Now that we've uh, ground that out, ground all those welds down with this uh, grinding disc on the grinder, uh, we're going to put a flap disc on the grinder now and go over it all again. And that's going to make it really smooth and take all the scratches out so when you paint it, it's going to look really, really smooth. So we got that all ground down with the uh, flap disc. Everything's smooth, corners are all rounded off. Uh, we're just going to touch up a couple things inside with a file we couldn't get to with the grinder just to make sure there's no sharp edges and then uh, we'll hang it up and paint it. So we got all the inside edges in here, around there, these inside edges where there's a bit of a lip uh, to hold your cell phone so it can sit up top here. Those are all filed down. Uh, we just got a little bit of weld spatter that uh, you can't get off with the grinder because it's obviously round and that's a square corner. Um, so we're going to get the chisel and a hammer and we're just going to tap these little nubs out of here. Um, that way your cell phone can sit flat. I do plan on putting some foam or some sort of uh, something down here so your phone isn't bouncing on this metal all the time. Um, some some sort of foam of some sort I'll stick in here, like sticky back foam or something. Um, that way your phone's got somewhere nice to set. So the plan was to uh, paint this contraption we just made here um, but uh, of course you open up the cabinet and you find out you not only have one empty paint can you have two empty black paint cans so uh, we're gonna find something else to do here for a little while still get that tractor in the shop tonight pick up some paint tomorrow um, but we'll get some paint tomorrow and keep going on with the progress then but we'll go outside um, it's a little cold that's why I was working in the shop today but we'll go outside and we'll find something else to do I've had the tractor plugged in for a little while here now. Uh, it is above freezing, but it still just starts a little better in this cold storage building. Uh, it starts a little hard because um, the heat of the day doesn't really get in here with the doors closed. So we had that plugged in for a little while just for easier starting. Uh, I'll go ahead and open the doors up and we'll get it out and get it over into the other shop. Um, there's a few things I want to do with it while when it's outside. Uh, with the loader do a few things and then park it in there and tomorrow we'll finish up this project moving the tractor out front. I got the teeth off the bucket. I was doing some dirt work the other day. Uh, we're going to get pull it up in front of the shop and stick the teeth back on it. Uh, and that way we can lift up, lift up a welder and move it off a trailer so we can um, start working on that trailer as our next project. When you're doing dirt work with that tractor, you got to take the uh, 
teeth off the bucket but uh, when you're using that bucket pushing snow or you want to pick something up it's really nice to have those teeth uh, in the snow it helps helps keep the bucket from digging into the ground and then when you're pushing snow and then also when you're lifting stuff it's quick you can just throw a sling or a chain over one of the hooks and uh, use that to lift because um, there are no other lifting points on that bucket that are easily available to use. tractor out, clevis on it and uh, sling we're gonna pick up this welder off this trailer and uh, move it underneath the shed close to the shop so in case we need to do some stick welding uh, I got a hundred feet of cables you just you just whip the cables out and uh, you can weld inside the building and leave the generator run outside I'll climb up in the uh, chore tractor here, the case 1394. Jump up in there and show you uh, where this is going to go, this phone holder. We got this unit here that's going to hold your phone. Uh, I kind of figured that this would be a nice spot for it here. Um, it's out of the way, it's above the controls. Um, it's not interfering with anything and when I rewired a bunch of lights in this tractor I put some LEDs on it. I had actually ran a wire back here for that already So it should be a simple install. It's got to drill some holes. So you can see I got the wire already ran up here um, It runs underneath this sill um, You can see it here where it comes off. It's in a loom so it's protected so it won't get rubbed through and short out uh, There is fuses right at the battery, so I'm not too concerned about that but it runs down underneath this foam, underneath the floor, and then across up in the battery is outside of the tractor, but it's underneath the floor in that area. So I got the wire coming up, there's a fuse in it already, and then there's also a fuse in the new wire for the um, Amazon thing came with the fuse in it already. So there actually be two fuses in this line, so you're not gonna short it out and uh, catch your tractor on fire. But I'm hoping to install this somewhere right about there. That's going to give you area to, um, you're away from all the levers. Everything is easy to get to. It's not going to cause any problems. And then also you're out of the way for the three-point hitch as well. And it's a nice location. You can put your phone there. You can still get out the window. Um, so I just got to drill and tap the holes in the back, drill and tap in the tractor, and we'll be good to go. So what I mean by drill and tap in the tractor is like right here. Uh, I got these two bolts, and then there's a th another hole here, another hole here, another hole here. Um, these holes are drilled and tapped. You can see the threads that are in them. Um, and I use these to mount, when I use the swing auger in the fall, I mount a camera here. Um, as well as I mount my, I got a three point hitch sprayer that goes on this tractor and then that bracket mounts here, these two holes, and then you got your controls nice and close on this side. So I wanted to leave this side open um, for all the different things that I use with this tractor and then use the other side of the cab for the location for the cell phone holder and charger. So you got the power wire here. Um, there's a here, hole here already, but it's in the wrong spot. I'm going to have to make another hole here. Drill and tap it, drill and tap it, and then that'll stay permanent. So I'm not worried about drilling and tapping these holes because that's going to be a permanent unit. It's going to stay in this tractor for as long as I have it, and then I'm sure when I sell it, nobody else is going to take it out either. So I think that's going to conclude today's video. Uh, we got the Case 1394 loader tractor in the shop. 
it'll warm up here tonight. Um, we're gonna drill and tap those holes, mark the location um, for those holes on the um, 12 volt power source and cell phone holder, and then to get some paint tomorrow morning uh, before I come out to the farm, and then we'll we'll paint that and get that mounted. Um, so thanks for watching the video today, guys, and uh, if you tune in tomorrow, we'll complete this project.